All right, I am Catherine Ryan here with The Mongol Show, and I'm here with Stephen Rabello. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hitchcock, uh, an amazing director, man, a mystery of a person, really. A lot yes. of just the profile is what most people think of him as. Right. Now, for you, before you actually started writing, you were at Harvard and did some social work, correct? Yes, I was, uh, I was working on a, a doctorate uh, at Harvard, and um, I, you know, it was semester break, and mm -hmm. I took a trip to California, and uh, my second. And um, I'm I don't I'm not a really good vacation guy. I I'm a thinker. I'm a worker. It's like what's next. And um, so somebody spotted that at a party in, in me and said, um, "Well, what would you rather be doing?" And I said, "Well, I would like to interview Alfred Hitchcock. You know why not?" <laughs> Set your bar high. Might as well. That's, <laughs> what, you know what's going to happen. Well, what happened was someone in the room said uh, his phone number is, and read out the digits, uh, because that person worked for Cary Grant. Mm -hmm. The odds of that happening, I mean, just think about that, the odds of that happening. So I called, and I was told that, um, you, you know, the chances were almost slim and none. And then and two days later, I'm sitting in Mr. Hitchcock's office, talking with him about his career, and um, uh, he's complimented me on the, the camera that I had, and what I was wearing and how I should be dressed differently. <laughs> and he was already directing me, which was a, an incredible honor. Of course, sit there, stand there. Sit there, yes. tilt your head that way, the light is good. And you know, the thing is he thought in pictures. And so he wanted the picture of me in his head to be the way it should be. And I, I was really honored by that. Um, he was a very imposing man with a lot of charisma and a lot of, um, a lot of fear tactics that could throw someone who was unsuspecting. And I, I think he liked that I was quick and sharp and uh, funny. I made him laugh, and he certainly made me laugh. And um, he, um, he responded. We responded to each other. It was just a, a really lucky uh, happenstance of personalities. Once in a lifetime moment, really, considered Truly. the last person to interview Alfred Hitchcock. So to have that, too. And you also had the chance to actually meet him, where so many people just have that idea of who he is or what they've seen in the pictures. Do you feel like the movie goes into his actual complexities and just shows who he is, not just as the person who talks at the end and beginning of the movie? Right. Uh, it's a good question. Well, we tried. Uh, we wanted to get beyond that TV uh, show personality facade because it, it was only that. It was a role that he played, and he played beautifully. Uh, but for people to mistake that for the real Hitchcock uh, would be a disservice, because he was very complicated. And the film tries to, you know, within, in the context of a reasonable running time and an entertainment, uh, try to get at some of those complexities of his, that he was capable of great kindness and great cruelty and great confidence and great self-doubt. Uh, let me think. He was a human being. Uh, he had a, you know, he was a, he was truly a genius, and that he was superhuman about. But in terms of his frailties and his personal weaknesses and insecurities, he had he had his issues. Of course, and Alma was always right there with him, even in the shadows. And that really comes across in the movie how much of a solid anchor he, she was in his life. In your book, also, do you go into detail about? Alma and Hitchcock's relationship, or is it uh, more focused on just Hitchcock making Psycho? The, the book itself, Alfred Hitchcock and the Making of Psycho, is <laughs> really literally that. It's what was he going through, why this movie at this time in his life, and what happened on the set every day. So uh, it's really kind of a documentary. It's kind of a fly on the wall version of what happened on that set. When a number of uh, producers approached me about making a film uh, based on the book. First of all, I was mystified. Uh, secondly, I was gratified. And then beyond that, though, I was um, adamant that if I were going to be involved in the film, then it was not going to be a movie about that book. We were going to use that book as the backdrop for a very, uh, very uh, kind of focused slice of Hitchcock's life at a certain point in his personal development and career. And so I felt that Alma needed to be the person who was the person behind the person, because that's really what she was. 
he wouldn't make a movie without her. He wouldn't make a movie without her approval. She was smart as a whip. She was, and it came across throughout the entire movie, just the way they snipped back and forth. Oh, and yeah. Their dialogue. It was very well written, obviously, and it was an absolute joy to watch. And, oh, of course, uh, I want to catch the book whenever it comes out in reprint. What is that date for that reprint also? Um, any minute. Any uh, minute? Really, any, any minute. It. It, should, okay. it should be in stores probably by the time the film itself is in wide release. So um, think about a Christmas stocking stuffer. Okay, you note know, to self. For your mysterious naughty friends. Everyone catch Hitchcock when it comes out in theaters.